Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a dark and atmospheric pop song similar to the styles of Chase Atlantic, Riley, Darcy, Gashi, and other artists in that lane. Let's dive in and check it out. Hey, Austin here from Make Pop Music. We're about to dive in and make something super, super vibey. But before we do that, if you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe before you click off. Also, if you want to support our channel, you can head over to makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, and courses. We also have a ton of free downloads over there, so go check that out. Let's dive in and let's look at how to actually create a dark and atmospheric pop song. Let's check it. The first thing I want to start with when I'm working in this style is some kind of key bed element. So I'm just using easy keys and I'm using this little interstellar preset. It's such a nice little like spaced out marimba. And then I've just got this really kind of like sad, melancholic progression. And this is really how the song starts. And you can see the chords if we click on easy keys, G minor seven, B flat add a ninth over D, B flat over E flat, E flat sus two. So we're using some different chord shapes. It just adds a little bit of that vibe. I've noticed Chase Atlantic uses different kind of chord structures like that as well. They'll add some sevenths, they'll add some ninths, they'll do chords over under kind of bass notes. It just makes everything not sound kind of like a generic kind of sad triad. So we're gonna start with that. And then I wanna basically build out these verse synths to make a little key bed. Let's get a little top melody going. So I've got easy keys on the Pogba setting. Got some murder melodies on it. And Murder Melodies is just doing some spread, it's doing a little bit of icy reverb, it's doing a little bit of saturation and some reverse and delay, and it just adds a little bit of like kind of spatial sauce. I want this tucked in the mix, uh, in the mix nicely. So here's what it sounds like over those keys. And then we've got this little reverse melody that's playing the same exact notes, it's just using a different preset. For this one, we're diving into Analog Lab because I wanted something that uh, isn't kind of so organic like the easy key sounds are. So we're using the excessive preset under here and then I've just done a little bit of uh, processing to it. So we've got this little Wurlitzer and it sounds like this in solo. It's got this like transient attack that I really like. And then it's got this kind of like swelling background noise that was really cool. Now we have these other couple things. So this is actually an ambient effects. I don't do this a ton in my mix. I had just downloaded the, uh, like one of the new cashmere packs and there were some really cool ambient effects that just kind of happened to fall in a kind of similar key and chord progression. So I just grabbed this, tuned it up a couple of semitones and it sounds like this in solo. What I did is I just kind of like rearranged it, kind of changed the pitch, changed the tempo, and then did some processing. Here's what it sounds like without my processing. It's basically just like a string section that has some kind of like granular synthesis on top, just has a couple little reverses in there. And then we're just doing some filtering with Pro-Q. Don't need a bunch of that top and low end. We're doing some digitalis. We're gonna use this quite a bit on this kind of uh, entire track. Here's what it sounds like with this. And then we've got another Pro-Q right here that's gonna automate up and down as we go through things like verses and choruses. And that pretty much creates the entire bed for the intro. So here's what it all sounds like all together. And later we're gonna go back and we're gonna do things like add automation with volume and with different effects and filtering, but that's pretty good for now. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the actual verse because that feels like a good starting point. So for the main keys in the verse, we're doing something similar to what we had for like the main keys in that intro. It's just the easy keys on the Pogba setting. So we're using one that's a little bit brighter than that interstellar setting that we had earlier. Super vibey. And then I wanted to layer something over top because that's so kind of washy and wide. We need something that's a little bit more focused up the middle and it has a little bit more bite. So again, we're going back to easy keys. I don't normally use this plugin this much. It just created the vibe that I wanted pretty immediately for this. And for this, we're doing the MK Dreams. It's just like a little kind of road sound. Then we have that top melody.
And honestly, that's pretty much it for the verse. Now let's go ahead and let's add a bass under. What we're doing for this is just adding a little Reese bass. It's just a quick one that I made in Serum on the spot. I'm basically gonna add some seconds just so as we go really low in the scale, you can still hear it on a small speaker. Here's what it sounds like in solo. You can see we've got some kickstart here. We're gonna side chain this to the drums that I'm about to show you in one second. And then we just have some pro cue taking out some low mids just so it kind of opens up space for all of these super ambient key beds that we're gonna have because you'll run into kind of low mid issues with things get washy and super reverby. So we're cleaning that up there. So with the keys and the bass, we have this. And then we just need to start introducing some kind of like hip hoppy trappy drum. So we have a kick and a snare. Here's the main pattern that we're playing. It's nothing super, super wild. And you can see that we have these uh, kind of bass side chain to it. We're gonna do the same thing now with this kind of synth bus. Uh, so we're gonna add some bus processing so the verse feels a little bit more vibey and then we'll be good to go. So you can see right here, we've got all that. Now for drums and percussion, we do this a lot on the channel. We're gonna add these things like little filtered hits under the snare just to give us some room and some space. Layered over the snare. And that's pretty much gonna do it for this main verse. We're gonna add vocals and effects later, but here's what we have. Now we're gonna build that out a little bit. We're gonna add this kind of hi-hat loop and this little glitch loop. Just to add a little bit of movement and then we're gonna pull that cashmere ambient effects loop that we had earlier back in. I wanna layer up one little noise on top of everything right now. So I have this little, uh, it's also a loop from the cashmere pack that I kind of heavily processed and I tuned it down, I chopped it up, I kind of swapped some arrangement areas around and it sounds like this. Pretty similar to like a saxophone. So now with the whole beat, we have this like nice, open, super vibey verse. Now let's move on to the chorus because things need to get a little bit bigger. So to make this chorus bigger, what we're doing is we have this kind of low pass filter that is just automating as the entire verse goes. You can see right here that it starts to swell up through the verse. Let me show you what these synths sound like in solo. Once we get to that hook, we open everything up so it can hit nice and hard. Uh, we don't need that kind of filtered out sound. So we have Everything that we had for the verse, so we've got the MK Dreams, we have the reverse melody, the top melody, the main keys here. We're not using the verse main keys for now, but we'll add them in later. And then uh, we've just got a couple new things. So we've got this little like arpeggiated bell. When I work on stuff with Riley, we love to use like all of these weird granular sounds. It's something that Chase Atlantic does a lot and people like Darcy do a lot. It's just really cool to add a little bit of texture. It doesn't need a ton of like melody. It's just right into the, the key of the song. And then we've just got this little kind of like random arp on top. And it's super spacey and washy. It's just a synth and Omnisphere that we're sending to the Omnisphere ARP. Really nothing super, super wild. We're just playing the same chords that we have. So all of the keys and the kind of drums and bass sound like this. The only thing that we added for the drums was this little um, kind of trap hat fill. It's just this little guy. just to get everything moving a little bit more. So in the chorus, we go from pretty small and filtered out and vibey for the verse to the kind of big open chorus. Now 
Now we can go ahead and we can bring in some of the effects that I have in here. These are just things that add a little bit of sweetener to the beat. So it's just like little synth shots like this. Little exhaust hits. Things like that that can really help a song transition or they can add emphasis to a new section. We've got some swells into the chorus. And that really helps that chorus feel like a chorus. So that's pretty much the entire arrangement for the chorus. The only real thing that we do is we kind of take a little bar out over here and we just add this little synth chop. It's basically all of the synths printed down and then I just added uh, Digitalis to just give it this really weird bit crushing. So we have that. Just gives us a nice little section to pull everything out. Me and Riley do stuff like that all the time. Nothing super, super crazy, but it can add a lot of excitement for the listener. Let's go into verse two because we do have some changes. We're down to basically just keys. So let's go over that little fill real quick. So we've just got these snares right here. It's just something I drew in. Basically just a nice little 16th triplet, nothing super, super wild. And then we've got that same respace over here and I'm following the pattern of that hat, but I'm swapping octaves on this. Nice little moment to give the listener something. We're gonna pop Riley's vocals in here in a minute so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. Uh, but here's what it sounds like once it goes into everything. Nice and chill. And what we did for the second verse is I actually took all of those like chordal synths that we had for verse one and I printed those into one element down here. You can see we just have it called chop synths. Here's what it sounds like. Basically just did a big chop on the entire synth bus. And then we've added this little like random arp and this little bell arp that we've chopped up and just kind of really manipulated granularly. Lots of weird little sounds like that. We've got that mixed with that little like almost like an Eastern style like saxophone. And then we're doing the same little chopping with this ambient synth. So this second verse has a lot of really cool movement in these synths because we printed everything to audio and then went in and fully manipulated. And then we've just got the little bass pulling out at the same time. We've got some little drum stops. This second verse is a really, really cool moment. Let me show you what this sounds like now that you've seen what the synths sound like once they've all been printed out. It just hits really, really, really nicely. Uh, then other than that, we go into this little B section of verse two where everything kind of spaces out a bit. We're back to those super ambient chords, no chops, and we've got the bass uh, really, really just like long and mellow. filtered out the drums a ton, filtered out the bass a ton. And now we just go into this last chorus and we're doing the same little thing in this last chorus for a split second that we did in verse two, where I'm going to chop up some of the synths, pull everything out, and then we're going to go into this big kind of wide sounds. You can see right here that on all the buses, we just automate the volume down right there. We're just chopping some of these little loops. Basically just a ton of call and response between every individual element. And with the filters coming off and everything kind of opening up, it gives us this nice, super big final chorus. Then we just go into the like little post chorus at the end super kind of simple pull out. We've done this a million times on the channel.
basically just turned the synth bus off until we wanted this little bass hit. Left it off for half a measure so everything impacts. And that's it for most of the instrumental. Let me show you what we have right here at the end though, because this is where things get really interesting. Then I'll add in Riley's vocals. Um, so at the end right here, we wanted to do something completely different. So we did a little chopped and screwed section. So I took one of the synths and just printed it out. Added a ton of digitalis, printed that, did a bunch of pitch, shift, pitch shifting, printed that. And then you can see up here that we're going from 114 BPM down to 94 BPM. So it's gonna slow everything down. We are pitching this kick drum down. So we go basically down two semitones. Um, and then we're just pitching pretty much everything down. I think four, three semitones. So everything's going three semitones lower at like almost 20 BPM slower. And it gives us this really weird chopped and screwed effect. Now we're slower. And then we just kind of end the song with that big chopped and screwed effect. Let me show you what we're doing for the vocals because they're the last little thing that I need to add in. And then that's pretty much the whole song. The vocals on this were really nothing too intense at all. We've just got his main lead vocal right here for the verse. It's literally just your kind of standard DS EQ, a little bit of compression. He does a lot of compression before he sends it to me. A little bit of Rosetta EQ. This is kind of doing most of the sauce. It's just doing some subtraction from the harshness and the sibilance, adding a little bit of warmth and air. And then we've got trusty old Auto-Tune Pro set to the key of the song. Here's what his lead vocal sounds like. In your pink linen, I know I've been replaced, I know that you win, and I wonder what it takes. Super simple vocal. He's got the, this is kind of the hook right here. He's got that duplicated. Pink linen, know I've been replaced, I know that. So we, he sang it once for the left, once for the right. And then we've got this little format shift vocal right here that we tuck under the whole mix. Then we've just got some harmonies over here. We've got these filtered. And I mean, that's pretty much it for the intro kind of hook arrangement. Then when we go into the verse, it's literally just one lead vocal with some ad libs. Calling it quits, I'm with the two pieces side of the bins. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling you friends. Calling your friends. You at. And I don't wanna fight no more, but the holes are trapped, cause you don't want me. Really just one lead vocal up the middle. We do have this little wet vocal. It's just a lead duplicated with a huge instance of crystalline thrown on. So we are at like a two second delay. We're at a large room. And then we've just got a compressor right here. This is just side chaining it to the main vocal. So it basically just allows us to get this super nice washy reverb like this. But it's side chained to the lead vocal so it doesn't really kick in until uh, it's ready to. You calling it quits, I'm with the two piece inside of the bins. You wanted to switch, so I just ended up calling your friends. We were We've covered kind of sidechain compressing your reverb to your lead. It's just what we did here. In the chorus, we just talked about the vocal arrangement. It's pretty much the same, just a little bit louder. So lead vocal in the middle, left and right vocal, wet vocal tucked underneath, side chained, and then all of these harmonies. Here's what they sound like without any filtering. Altogether, we've got this. And that's literally it. Other than that, we go into the second verse. It's just one big lead vocal right here. Everything's pressing me lately, it gives me anxiety. So I keep waiting on the wheel and look right beside of me. 
That's pretty much it. Then we go to that part that I showed you earlier that has like everything drawn out. The drums are super filtered out. We wanted to kind of do this like Travis Scott Don Toller effect. And we actually covered this earlier this week in our Instagram. So if you don't follow us over there, go to Make Pop Music on Instagram. We post little reels. Um, and essentially, it's just the lead vocal with a bunch of extra effects on it. So here's what it sounds like without those. Stop that cool. And I'm trying to forget. So the first step of this effect is tuning this much harder. We're going to a retune speed of zero and we're taking the format to 105 to give us that like kind of, you know, sauced out vocal. And then we've just got a vocal doubler right here with the Eventide 910. Uh, you could use something like Waves Doubler, any kind of chorus or modulation. This is basically just spreading this out and adding a little bit of that like haziness. Time play cool. And I'm trying to forget with Birkin bags just like you do. And and then we've just got some repeater and some delay, just doing a bunch of reverb and delay. So we've got an eighth note doing a serious spread. So it is pretty wide. And then we have like a six second ambient delay or uh, ambient reverb that we're just kind of filtering out. Nothing too, too crazy at all. Here's what that sounds like. And then we're just doing a little bit of EQ to kind of like tame up some of those high mids because they get a little bit aggressive with all of that reverb and delay. And then a little bit of Rosetta EQ, again, just taking away some harshness, adding a little bit of warmth and air. And here's what that sounds like. This is a really cool part of the song. We wanted to draw it back before the final chorus. Then the chorus is the same arrangement. He just added like one extra harmony that's nothing super, super wild. And then for the final, we do have a vocal under the chopped and screwed section. So let me show you what this sounds like. Yeah. So all we did for this is I just took the vocal from the chorus and slowed it down to 94 BPM, I believe. Yeah, 94 BPM, so slowed it down 20. And then for the effects on this, we are doing the same thing on autotune, but I'm just transposing this down three semitones because that's what everything went down. I am adding quite a bit of formant, so we're going to 127 to give us that like super kind of like fucked up faded vocal. And then we've got Digitalis over here doing some pixelation. That gives us that like really coming apart bit crush that you hear a lot in Chopped and Screwed. And then we've got a pretty gnarly reverb with Crystalline to just really make this super saucy in the background. And after all that, you get this kind of like hazy, monstery kind of low tune vocal. I wanted it to sound like it was coming apart because it added to the effects. Here's what it sounds like if we don't do any of that. No, I've been replacing another And then with everything, that's what you get. So this entire song is out. You can go listen to it. It's Pink Linen by Riley. I produced the whole thing, mixed and mastered the whole thing. I don't think that this session is a final mix. Um, it's got a couple little small tweaks like the drum bus and things like that that we can't really talk about in this video. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the entire arrangement. What I could do real quick is show you what it sounded like when I sent a demo. We've never really done this on the channel, so I've worked a lot with this artist. His name's Riley, and typically he'll just send me like a vision board for what he wants, and I'll kind of scrub out something really quick and send it to him, and then he'll write over top of that. So this is what the first demo sounded like. You'll hear that it has a lot of the same elements. It's got all those keys. It's got the same kind of like uh, drums behind it. We just added a couple layers later, but here's what it sounds like. You can hear we also tuned it down. We'll go to this part. So when I'm sending something to an artist to write on, that's typically what they're getting. That's about the quality that I'll send because I don't want to spend too much time on it if they don't cut it. I also don't want to fill it up way too much where they can't write over it. So that's what I sent Riley. Riley sent an initial version back with just like one lead vocal to see if I was, you know, messing with the melody. Um, and then once we both signed off, I think we just shifted this down. How many? Maybe two. 
one or two semitones, uh, kept the tempo the same. He sent all these final vocals. And then once I get the final vocals, that's when I go in and I add the weird things like all these little stuttery synths, all of these rises and hits. But until then, I like to keep that kind of demo beat for the artist pretty open. So we go from that to this. You don't want me no more, so I stay out late to fall. Say I'm good when you're calling. Back to full cause I'm falling. And then that's pretty much the entire production and the process of how we produce remotely. If you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. It helps us out a bunch. Let us know what you want to see in the comments down below. Let us know if you go check out the song. Again, the link is in the description, so feel free to go listen to it in its entirety. Other than that, head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs. We have a start to finish production course where I show you how to produce a pop song and book clients. We also have a ton of free content over there. We've got free samples, free presets for Serum. Go check it out. Again, makepopmusic.com. That's going to do it for this week's video. We'll see you guys soon. Much love, everyone. Peace.